A weird PS Plus bug happened this week, Jim Ryan talks about PC releases and their presence in the Japanese market, Guerrilla talks Horizon without Lance Reddick and the backlash on the DLC, and Take Two hints at their upcoming lineup including GTA 6. All that and more in today's PlayStation news, let's get to them. PlayStation Plus was acting up this week with several users who reported on Reddit a glitch that brings you out of a PS Plus game into the home after 15 minutes. The issue seemed to affect every tier of PS Plus user and every type of game, so it was on Sony's backend. Fortunately, the Reddit thread now reports that the problem is gone, so you can carry on playing during the weekend. Jim Ryan was in an interview with Famitsu where he talked about their PC releases and strategy. He mentioned that the feedback regarding staggered PC launches has been positive from the PlayStation community and they will continue as they want to increase their share of their PC market, bringing more content to the platform, but PS5 users have nothing to worry about, as bringing games to consoles first will be PlayStation Studios' priority. That's great, but hopefully we'll not see another Last of Us situation. Regarding PS5 exclusives, Sony CEO Kenichiro Yoshida reinforced in a recent corporate meeting that those are central to growing the PS5 install base as part of their strategy for expansion in the game and network services division. Yoshida indicated their goal is to expand content pipelines and provide increasingly innovative and compelling game experiences that grow the PS5 install base and increase the number of active users. Back to Ryan and his Famitsu interview, he also talked about the performance of PSVR 2, nearly three months removed from launch. He said that since the device has just launched, it may be too early to judge its popularity, but they are happy to see the positive reactions from the users and media. Ryan mentioned as per a rough Google translation that there were more than 40 titles launched for the device and there are many upcoming titles for 2023 and beyond as they continue to push forward so that people who purchase can enjoy it for longer and they can secure profit. Often discussed is Sony's presence in the Japanese gaming market after reducing first party operations there and constantly losing to Switch in sales but Ryan reassured it is still an important market for them. From another Google translation, he said that the Japanese market will continue to be one of the most important markets for them, since it's the second largest market in the world and PlayStation's birthplace. Plus, the company has a long history of relationships with Japanese developers and publishers for titles like Final Fantasy, Monster Hunter and Tekken, so in that sense it's also extremely important. Regarding their strategy in the region, Ryan listed games such as Elden Ring, Resident Evil 4, Monster Hunter and Wild Hearts which are already out for PS5 as they were born in Japan and released there as well. They have Final Fantasy XVI and Street Fighter VI coming up in the recent future, which will be important launches for the world but Japanese fans will have a particularly high affinity for them. To tie into those comments from Jim Ryan, PlayStation Japan's official Twitter account revealed that Ghost of Tsushima has achieved over 1 million copies sold in the region as they thank fans for their support. Ghost of Tsushima reaches around 10 million copies sold, which puts the franchise at the top of PlayStation's most successful first-party IPs of the past generation. Speaking of Ghost, if you are thinking about the reveal for its sequel in the PlayStation Showcase next week, rumors are here to point out otherwise. Insider Jeff Grubb talked about it in one of his most recent podcasts, where he said he might have just sniffed out two things that won't be there, indicating that neither Ghost of Tsushima 2 nor Dragon Age Dreadwolf will be there. It sucks because I had Ghost of Tsushima 2 in my predictions video, which you can check here, but I'll stick to it and take the L if needed. Let's go back to PlayStation President Jim Ryan one more time, but now about rumors for that showcase. According to insider Milia Mann, Ryan is focused on Total Mindshare after the whole Microsoft Activision business, and their internal messaging is to make a statement and make noise. Now this doesn't outright point to anything about the showcase, but fans are hopeful the event will be one for the ages. Some fans have already started providing false leaks about the PlayStation Showcase next week. One of them posted a picture on Twitter that shows some titles like The Last of Us Factions, Twisted Metal, Metal Gear Subsequent, Mortal Kombat without the one at the title, and more. Some of these are fair guesses and others are coming from rumors, but are far from an official leak for the Showcase. We don't know if a new Uncharted will be part of the PlayStation Showcase next week, but if you need to feel the thrill of the series again, you can visit the new movie-themed roller coaster. Uncharted The Enigma of Penitence will open at the Port Aventura World Park in Barcelona, Spain this June 17. Next, it appears Guerrilla Games is still not ready to talk about the future of Horizon without Lance Reddick, as per an interview from narrative director Ben McCaw and lead writer Annie Kitane with BGC. McCaw said, We are really just sort of focused on absorbing this tragedy and sending out our thoughts to his family. We have not thought about it, it's not really the time to think about it, we just miss him. 
Mako also reminisced one of his favorite memories of working with Reddick, being as both he and Ashley Borsch recorded lines for the first time, and Mako saw sparks from two great actors going at it. Kitain didn't get to work with Lance directly, but was fortunate to write some dialogue for him, and said it was great to write for Silence with such a different character in Horizon. Born in Shores, the most recent DLC to feature the actor apparently is a big role for the character in the future of the series, and while I haven't played it based on the previous two games, I can say it will not be the same without him. Mako and Kitain also talk about the backlash scene online for Horizon Born in Shores, and this next section will contain spoilers. So the DLC features an optional kiss between Aloy and Seika, the game's companion for the new story, which has generated review bombing for the game and harassment for some of the game's staff, including vocalist Julie Elvin. Kitain said they are always looking to make something compelling and emotionally engaging, and that for people who play the game they are always interested in hearing about their experiences, thoughts and feedback. Both for those who didn't play the game and they are just trying to be negative, they find it easy to ignore. Mako echoed Kitain's comments saying they love getting feedback from their fans, and they love it when it's constructive feedback, when people say they didn't like this or that, with regard to virtually any aspect of the game. And for the blatant negativity, he personally finds it easy to just compartmentalize and realize that this is a mindset he can never jive with. Bungie appears to be considering making a new Destiny game according to the latest closed survey sent to Destiny 2 players. The survey asks plainly if you would play a new game for the following franchises, with the Destiny logo below the question. Fans are apparently fed up with the state of Destiny 2 technically and creatively after the most recent Lightfall DLC failed to live up to players' expectations, and Bungie acknowledged their mistakes. Sony has revealed additional information on their accessibility controller Project Leonardo as part of celebrating Accessibility Day this past week. The official name for the controller will be Access Controller, which includes an array of swappable buttons and stick caps for further customization, plus four 3.5mm auxiliary ports for any additional switches required by the user, and the controller can sit in a flat surface or a tripod. Besides adding or removing components as needed, the controller can also be customized using the PS5 button remapping options. Moving on from first party news, Take 2 appears to be teasing the launch window for Grand Theft Auto 6 in their latest earnings report. They expect to achieve massive net bookings of over $8 billion and over $1 billion in adjusted unrestricted operating cash flow by fiscal year 2025, and they also expect to keep those high levels of profits for fiscal 2026 and beyond. According to IGN, the company hit $5.3 billion in the past fiscal year, so for them to make a $3 billion jump, they need to have a massive library release in the next few years, or one game that performs behemoth numbers. Likely the latter, which means Grand Theft Auto 6 could be released as early as April 2024, or as late as March 2025, so a reveal can happen at any point in the next 12 months. But as I mentioned in my predictions, I wouldn't expect it at the PlayStation Showcase since the game is so big it can be revealed on its own. Despite the GTA 6 rumors, it seems the publisher indeed expects to publish a massive library in the next fiscal year. As part of the same press release, they said they expect to publish 16 games within the next fiscal year, including immersive core games like their sports titles NBA 2K24 and WWE 2K24, plus an eagerly anticipated new IP from one of their premier studios, one more mid-core title alongside LEGO 2K Drive, three indie games including After Us, and the rest are mobile games. Another title listed was Judas from Bioshock creator Ken Levine, but it was still TVD and is not releasing in the next fiscal year. If you still think paying 70 bucks for new gen or Take 2 games is a lot, it seems you're an exception as Take 2 CEO Stro Selnik said in the company's earnings call they haven't seen a pushback on the frontline price. Instead, they are seeing consumers seeking to limit their spending by going to stuff they really, really care about, blockbusters, or to value, and sometimes it could be both. And the good news for 2K is they have a bunch of blockbusters and a wonderful catalog. Do you agree with the executive, or do you think paying 70 bucks is still too high regardless of the game experience? Sound off in the comments or vote in the poll in the community tab. Take-Two also added fuel to the speculation fire that is an upcoming PS5 Pro. Take-Two CEO Stross Selnik was asked by GameIndustry.biz if he believes both PS5 and Xbox series will get mid-gen upgrades, to which he replied, we probably will. And he also added that previous mid-gen upgrades for PS4 and Xbox One didn't affect business much, so he likely thinks the same will happen with this generation refresh. Previously, Insider Gaming's Tom Henderson indicated that PS5 Pro was indeed real and could be targeting a late 2024 release. Microsoft and Activision have scored a second win this week, as China's State Administration for Market Regulation has given their approval for the merger in the same week after the European Commission approved on Monday. 
The Activision acquisition by Microsoft is now backed by China, Europe, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Chile, Serbia, Japan and South Africa, but still faces a battle against the UK CMA and the US FTC. It seems like it's gonna happen, but we still have to wait. Sony appears to be getting all Activision content moving forward regardless if the deal goes through as implied by the European Commission. You can check more in our previous video here. Let's circle back to more gaming announcement rumors, but now for the rest of the Summer Game Fest, as Resetera user I Am A Hero 2 has suggested next month will be evocative in a reference to the weapon you use to summon personas in Persona 3. It appears that a Persona 3 remake will be announced at the Xbox Game Showcase on June 11, as Microsoft has exclusive marketing rights for the game, just like with the previous Persona ports. Persona 3 videos leaked last month with Gematsu confirming the game has been in development despite not being able to verify the leaked footage. Moving to game releases, Aliens Dark Descent, the isometric real-time strategy game from Team Dallas Interactive and Focus Entertainment, has gone gold ahead of its June 20 release for PS4 and PS5. It costs 40 bucks and pre-ordering it grants an exclusive Black Armor set and a feline companion. Power Watch Simulator is going to clean the streets of Bikini Bottom as the official Twitter account has teased. The DLC will be launching for all platforms including PS4 and PS5 this summer. Mortal Kombat 1 is now real and launching on PS5 this September 19, with the trailers confirming the reboot rumors in a new universe that has been created by Fire God Liu Kang and featuring reimagined versions of iconic characters plus new combat systems, modes, finishing moves, an immersive campaign, and features like crossplay and cross progression. Pre ordering the game gives you a playable Shan song, with the standard edition going for 70, the premium edition going for 110, including the combat pack which is a Jean-Claude Van Damme skin for Johnny Cage, early access to the game on September 14, early access to 6 new playable characters and 5 new cameo fighters, then the collector's edition includes everything from the premium edition, a 16.5 inch figure of Liu Kang by course, 3 art prints, a steel case, a Liu Kang skin, and 1450 dragon crystals. And rumors were also true about Lords of the Fallen launching in October, revealed with a new gameplay trailer. The game arrives for PS5 on October 13, pre-ordering it gives you bronze, silver and gold armor things, plus 3 XP items, 5 HP items and 5 MP items. There are 3 versions, the standard for 70 bucks, the deluxe edition for 80 bucks with a digital soundtrack, 100 page art book, 3D model viewer and the Dark Crusader as a starting class, plus a collector's edition for 250 bucks with all the contents from the deluxe, a double sided poster, art cards a metal display case with LED lights, a 10-inch Dark Crusader figurine, and a steelbook. And those are the PlayStation stories for today. Come back on Monday for a new video, but remember to share your thoughts on any of these news in the comments below, like or dislike to let me know your feedback, check out other videos you may enjoy while you're here, and consider subscribing for more on PlayStation. Thank you so much for watching, my name is Joseph, this is hype for games and let's get hype!